All right, so the essential questions are up. So here it is. What is a function? What is an inverse? And how do you get the inverse of a function? That's what we're going to um, answer today in this lesson. And in the next lesson, it's going to be the questions are going to be what is a parent function? And before we go over all the functions, what does each change mean to the graph? Or how does that last question there is how does Like if we add one to the parent function, how does it change the graph, right? What does it do to the graph? Okay, so, so here is my first slide, okay? So a function is a relationship between one or more variables, all right? The key part to this definition is right here. Each x value is attached to exactly one y value. All right. Exactly one y value. All right, so if you look at this, and remember what my domain stands for, right? These are my X values, and these are my Y values, the range, okay? This is a function because every single X value here, negative four, zero, one, and four, leads to a specific one, exactly one, y value, negative two, negative three, two, and one. So here too, I could write this as a coordinate, negative four comma negative two. I'm gonna do this one as well, one comma two, and then you guys can see that, right? Yeah, so there's this coordinate, right? And then we can graph this coordinate, this function onto a graph sheet of paper, and we can do that. Okay, not a function. This one here is not a function. Why? Well, negative four leads to exactly one y value, right? This x value of negative four leads to one y value of negative two. This zero leads to exactly one y value of three. I'm gonna change this picture up a little bit because this is also a function given. Yeah, this is a function. Sorry, it says not a function, but this is a function because one can lead, it leads to exactly one Y value of two. Four can lead to the same Y value as long as it's exactly one, okay? How this can be not a function is if negative four now becomes that as well. So that's not a function. If we add that little brown line. Okay, so if we add this part there, now it's not a function because negative four leads to two y values. Okay, so we can have multiple x's lead to the same y value. We cannot have one x lead to multiple y values. Okay. All right. Next one, graphically. How do we know it's a function? How do we know it's a function? And we 
there's a test for that graphically, okay? It's called the vertical line test. Okay, right here. It is called the vertical line test. All right? That test, you, it's in the name. You get the vertical line. Let's see that, that's my vertical line, right? And what you do with that line is you run through it. You run through the graph, okay? Whether it be a pencil, whether it be a ruler, it doesn't matter. If this vertical line touches the function more than once, it's not a function, okay? Let's talk about how that works. How does this this um how does this test work or why does it work? Yes. Yeah. Because if it hits it more than once, let's say, for example, I have at negative nine, I have this point at negative two and negative nine, one. Okay, that's another point on the graph or on the function. Okay. And if I go through with my vertical line again at that point, there's two coordinates there, correct? If I show it to you guys, like um, the thing before, my x value is negative 9, and it leads to 1, and it leads to negative 2. Coordinate form, this is my y's. Coordinate form, it will be negative 9, comma 1, negative 9, comma negative 2, right? Yeah. So that specific, at that specific point, negative nine, my X value at negative nine, it tells me or it shows me that I have two Y values for that one X value, right? And that goes totally against what a function can be. Okay, does that make sense? Questions on that and the vertical line test? No? So yeah, you just um, take the vertical line and you run it through the graph, okay? And make sure it only hits it once. Cool? All right. Moving along. Oops. Okay. So if we know what a function is, then what is an inverse? An inverse relation is just reversing the domain in the range. Okay, that's all it is, literally. An inverse function is reversing the domain in the range and the relation passes through the vertical line test. So an inverse function is you get the inverse and you test that inverse out using the vertical line test. If it passes, then it's an inverse function. Does that make sense? Yeah. So just make sure that each X value has exactly one Y value. Cool? Yeah. So here's a little example to our right. Domain is my X. Range is my y, domain is my x, range is my y. So if my original function is here, okay, negative four x value leads me to negative two, negative four comma negative two, zero leads me to negative three, one leads me to two, and four leads me to one, right? So I just put it in coordinate form here. So you guys can see both. All right. So the inverse relation 
is just flipping the domain in the range. So my range becomes my domain here. Look, negative two, negative three, two, one, negative two, negative three, two, one. You just flip it. Since negative four here led me to negative two, negative two here is going to lead me to negative four. Negative three is going to lead me to zero. Two is going to lead me to one. And one is going to lead me to four. You guys see how I just switched it? Yeah. My domain became my range. My range became my domain. You just literally flip flop, right? Switch position. All right. So here in coordinate form, the inverse of negative four, negative two is negative two, negative four. The inverse of zero, negative three is negative three, comma zero. The inverse of one, comma two is two, comma one. And the inverse of four, comma one is one, comma four. Okay, literally just, it's that simple. Okay, that's what an inverse does. And we can find inverses of very various ways. This is just one, okay? Cool, I'll let you guys finish up. All right, moving along. Okay, there are, I should put a three. Oops. How do we get the inverse of a function? There are three ways to find the inverse, okay? Number two, we already um, talked about. We flip the domain in the range, right? Yeah. Literally get the domain, my range, get the range, that's my new domain, okay? Graphically speaking, we reflect the line or reflect the function over the y equals x line, okay? Y equals x is just the, um, so if I have a graph here, y equals x line is just this line here. Okay, so that red line, we're just gonna reflect it over. And number one, <clears throat> I don't really focus on, because if we're gonna graph it, if there's a graph, right, then you can figure out the coordinates. And if you can figure out the coordinates, you could just do number two. You could just do this, this one here. Right. If there was a graph, let's say, and you knew the points to it, the coordinates to it, all you gotta do is get the coordinates and do number two. Okay. So number one, graphically, I'm not really gonna focus on. I'm gonna focus on two and three. Okay. Okay, I'll give you guys some time to write this out. Um, for the next slide, guys, for my examples, please put your pencils down. I will give you guys time to write out whatever. I won't erase anything. Yeah. I need your um, full attention up here because we're gonna we're gonna do number three. We're gonna algebraically. We're gonna substitute y for f of x, switch the x and the y, and then solve for y, okay? And this notation is a little bit different. Okay, this guy here, it's the inverse function of f, like that. Okay? 
So give you guys about 30 more seconds. We'll be back in about 30 seconds. I had a question on the graphically reflect the line over y equals x line. y equals x, if you guys think about it graphically, y equals mx plus b, right? What's my b value? My y in a set, but what is the what is the number? Zero. That's why it crosses here. Yeah. And then your slope is one, so you go one up, one over, one up, one over to the right. Okay. The slope is one. Your y-intercept is zero. And you just grab that line and it just reflects it over. But again, I'm not gonna um focus on graphically because if you know how to flip the domain in range and if you can get the coordinates of the graph right then we should be good okay all right moving along oh there's a brain break so let's do this for a little okay so we went over all the notes now we're just going to do some examples okay so here we have two examples right find the inverse finding the inverse of the first one right 16 goes into 18 33 goes to 31 12 goes into 48, 38, 38 leads me to 6, 18 leads me to 40, right? So we can coordinate, we can write this as in terms of coordinate. It'll be just something like that. Right? I can't emphasize that enough. It's a, it's a coordinate. And to find the inverse, we're just flipping this, right? So my domain becomes my range and my range becomes my domain. So it becomes like that and it becomes like that, right? So 18 now is the domain and it leads me to 16. Um, 48 now is my domain and it leads me to 12. And then the last one right there uh, 40 is my new domain, and it leads me to 18. All right. Questions on that? Pretty simple. Yeah. My next example, I'm going to do up on... I'm going to stop my share for now. Okay. And then go to my camera. Well, I can show you guys this with a lot of space. Okay. So here, here is the, the problem. And I have to figure out what the inverse of that function is, right? Okay. So again, if you look at your notes, It says that the first one, well, you guys can't see this. There you go. The first step is to substitute y for f of x. So all we're doing in class is literally y equals f of x. y equals f of x. So we're going to put y here instead of f of x. So equals 2 over 5x minus 2. Okay. That's step one. Step number two, if you look at your notes again, it says to flip, right, the x and the y. So I'm going to put x equals y right there equals 2 over 5y minus 2. 
like that. Okay. And my next step after that is just to solve for y. Okay. So how do we solve for y? What do I do first? Add two to both sides. All right, so x plus two equals two over five y. And then what? Multiply by what? By five halves. The reciprocal, right? So if you multiply this by five over two, we're gonna. I'm gonna switch this over to my left hand side. So y equals five over two x plus five over two times two. Okay, I just I just distributed the five halves out. Okay. So if we simplify that out, it's gonna be y equals five halves x plus five halves times two. Those two just cancel out and you get five. Okay. All right. So now the last step, yeah, try and stay focused. The last step now is just to change The, the formation of it. So at, this is read inverse function of x, of x, okay? So now instead of y, I'm gonna plug in inverse function of f of x equals five over two x plus five. That is my inverse. That's it. Okay. All right. Cool. Questions on that? Before before I do zoom out. Relax. Relax. Okay. So that is example. This is my next example that we have, right? And it asks you to graph graph this line, right? And to get the inverse and to graph the inverse of the function. Okay? So first up, let's graph that line. Well, I'm at three, right? Three is my y-intercept. And now my slope is negative three, so I'm gonna go down three over to the right one. Down three over to the right one, right? So here is my line. Right there. Oh, that's not a good line. So let's just do this. Let's do that. Okay. Okay, that's my line right there. And the reason why I don't focus on reflecting it over this y equals x line is because of like, like what I was saying before, I know three points on this line, right? Because I created them. Those three points are zero comma three, 
one comma zero and two comma negative three, right? All you're gonna do here to find the inverse is flip them. So three comma zero or zero comma three becomes three comma zero. One comma zero becomes zero comma one. Three comma negative two or two comma negative three becomes negative three comma two. And let's graph those. Three zero is right here. Zero one is right here. And negative three two is right here. So if I go get a line, And I do that. Okay. One cool feature here, class, is our graphic. Is how it looks graphically. Okay. Notice that they're mirror images, and the mirror is the line that we've been talking about, right? Is this line here. Right, that's my mirror, right? And it looks like mirror images. So yes, you can fold your paper and you can figure out what happens that way, right? And you can actually try and reflect it if you want. But this I found, oops, this I found to be the easiest way, okay? Yeah. Okay. Questions? Remember all of these videos are on YouTube, right? And you can just fast forward it and find the, the stuff that you want. Okay. All right. That's it for today. That's the lesson for today, guys. And I will see you guys on the next one.